Continuing where we left off, uh, there's one more data cleaning step that may be useful on this data set to improve our R squared score even further. And we're going to, in particular, we're going to try and uh, manage outliers. So to manage outliers, we're going to use what's called the clip values pill. And an important question is, should we it, it, it is, whereas edit metadata didn't really matter where we put it, whether we put it before or after apply math operation. And we could have even put it after the select columns if we wanted to. Clip values has more implications. If we clip values before we apply the math operation, well, then we may end up removing data that isn't technically an outlier. And if we put it in after math, apply math operation, then it will likely remove fewer outliers. So let me explain that a little bit better here. I'm going to take a look at this data set again. And notice in particular, we, we typically have outliers with continuous data, like BMI or charges. And it happens, um, well, it can happen on both types, but in the, I, I expect it more likely to happen here on charges where we have it highly skewed. And some values are really high, but they're so small, we're just not even seeing the bars. Once we convert that to a bell curve after the supply math operation, let's see if it will, no, it hasn't run, so it won't, make, won't let me preview it here. Once we do that, though, um, there are far fewer features that are actually outliers. So there are arguments uh, to put it in either place. Uh, you know, if we put it before, we're saying that we're removing all outliers, including the theoretical ones. If we put it after, it's only those that are mathematically outliers. I'm going to just go ahead and make the choice to put it after. So let me give myself a bit more room here. Okay, let's see if I can squeeze this in. Okay, clip values need some decisions or parameters to be uh, parameter decisions to be made. So clip peaks means only clip those that are outliers on the right hand side, the positive side, or the higher uh, the max end, and then uh, sub peaks is on the minimum end, or we can clip both. Uh, so if we apply this to to just charges, then we're really only going to need to clip peaks. If it was something like uh, BMI, that was a much more natural. Um, sorry, normal uh, histogram, we would want to clip both. But I don't expect, looking at the BMI histogram, that we're actually going to find any outliers or many at all. So I'm only going to clip peaks and apply this to charges. So we have a few options. We can say clip everyone above a 99th percentile, or we can say just clip anyone at this number or above. Theoretically, it's better to use a percentile unless we have a, a uh, specific reason to not allow it to go above a certain constant, like maybe it will be impossible for us to ever get values above a certain number in the future. I don't think that really applies to this data set, but I can imagine some context where you might want that. But I think it's more often we'll want percentile. And the old version wouldn't allow for decimals. Let's see if this one does. So when it comes to outliers, there's two potential rules to follow. There's the uh, in fact, let me pull them up and give you some examples here. We call this the uh, empirical rule. And here we go. We got some nice images for it. The empirical rule says simply, actually, this one's better. Anyway, it says that any value that is above 99.73% of the data set, so the 99.73% third percentile, and anything above that is considered an outlier. Similarly, anything below that is considered an outlier. This rule only applies if the data has a normal distribution. Well, come back here, and as you might remember, after we ran the apply math operation in a prior video, the, the uh, charges feature did have a very normal looking distribution. So if I put this after apply math operation, I'm going to use this 99.73 percentile rule. If not, if I didn't or wasn't able to adjust the skewness to fit it within normal bounds, I would follow the two key 
HSD. Whoops, if I spelled it right. Rule uh, for outliers. And this rule, let's try searching again there. There we go. In this rule, we uh, a box plot is a better way to visualize what we're doing here. We we uh, we plot the Tukey box plot with a specific formula, and you can see the formula right here for where the whiskers go on the either end of the plot. The lower end formula is the quartile one. Here we go. So uh, we have let's div we div divide the data set into four quarters. And this is the theoretical minimum value. This is quartile one, which represents the first 25% of the data set from here, as far as it goes that way. On this side from quartile three, uh, oops, let me do that. This gives us, um, well, quartile two is the median. This part gives us the second 25%, third 25%, and then from quartile three, as far as it goes, that's the top 25%. So this formula gives us what the theoretical minimum and theoretical maximum should be, which is where the whiskers are plotted. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what the actual minimum and maximum are. So in this case, we take the quartile one value, which is this value, and subtract from that one and a half times the interquartile range, which is this whole difference right here. And then same thing above, but plus one and a half times inter interquartile range. And as you can see, some values will be lower than that theoretical minimum or maximum, and those are the ones we identify as outliers. So to do this one in, uh, in, in Azure, we would actually have to uh, calculate that formula ourselves, and we would plug it in here as a constant. And we would say, okay, here's the actual theoretical maximum, and put that in there. The reason why I'm not going to do that is because we prefer this Tukey method when the data are skewed. And since we've, uh, since we've made an adjustment for that back here, since we've fixed it with the apply math operation and our data are now normal, we're going to go with the original one, the empirical rule, and stick with anything above 99.73%. So it says then next here is what do you want to substitute for that value? Well, we could do a few things. We could simply delete it and make it missing data, uh, or we could substitute the mean or median or the threshold of whatever this value would be, 99.73%. Of insurance charges. I'm going to stick with the threshold, the default, um, but I think another argument, one that I, if I don't have a lot of outliers, I would probably prefer to make it missing and remove those rows altogether. Um, however, I'll just stick with thresholds and that's the default. Select which column I want to apply this to. Um, it'll actually be charges LN. Uh, so this means I'm going to have to, I'm going to select charges for now just so it runs, but I'm going to have to run this experiment through apply math operation, then stop it, and then come back here and change this because I want to apply it not to the original charges, but to the natural log transformed version of charges. And then in select columns, I'll have to, uh, oh, let's see, I've already got LN charges in there. So I think that'll be okay. Overwrite flag means it will uh, add a column that will indicate whether or not that value is overwritten. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and add an indicator column too so you can see what they both do. Uh, well, actually, no. Let's leave this one off for now, and I'll keep the overwrite flag. Let's go ahead and submit this and just keep an eye on it. Oh, pipeline, i got to add. Um, i got to select my and click out here. And... Let's see, there we go. For some reason, oh, my, I, I was too long away from my computer. I got to start up my uh, compute instance again, which I don't mind. I'm glad it stopped because we want it to, we, we set it to do that automatically so that it doesn't um, run up a big bill. So let's go ahead and uh, save this as it is. There we go. Go back to my compute. Yours is probably already running. If so, uh, don't worry about this. Start this up again, and I'll pause the video until it's ready. Okay, got that running again. Back to designer pipeline. Okay, got my clip values in there. I have my apply math operation completed. Oh, this is nice. I could have just gone back to this and 
the completed version of it. I didn't even have to run that far. And I can change this from charges to LN charges. Save. Leave all those as they are. Go ahead and submit this one. All right, let's pause and wait. All right, this one just finished up. Let's take a look at the results. It looks like we're gonna be really similar. And in fact, I think we're identical to what we had before. That means that there were no outliers for it to clip after applying the math operation. So just to see how this would work, let's flip this around. Let's put this one up here. And let's clip outliers before we apply our math operation. And I'm going to show you this time what the indicator column does. All right, let's go ahead and run this one now. All right, I got an error. I'm gonna leave this in the video because I do this all the time and I wanna point it out so hopefully you can learn the lesson that I struggle with here. When I did that, remember that our clip values was set to work on the natural log of charges. Well, we don't have the natural log of charges yet because apply math operation now happens after clip values. So come here and we're going to change this to charges. And then uh, let's wait till this runs. Actually, no, we won't need to because this will stay on charges. This will replace charges. That'll be perfect. Let's run that. So, uh, <clears throat> well, yeah. Okay, well, this is still processing. Clip values is done. Let's take a look at this one. Preview data result set. And scroll to the end here. All right, we have the charges column, and this includes the actual clipped values, and then an indicator here of whether or not they got clipped. So none of these were outliers as they were. That's that tells us. Now, were there any outliers at all? Well, we'd have to download this data and see if we got any trues here on charges clipped, or uh, just check and see if uh, this histogram right here looks any different from, let me show you here. Let's right click on insurance and preview that one. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, here's the actual output data. I can see a couple of small ones out there in the result, results data set. Does it look any different? Going back and forth, it does to me, yes. I can see this histogram right here of charges is changing a bit. So I can see that there were some outliers that got clipped and I'm not gonna take the time to go back and, although I could download um, the clip data set and see if any of those are set to true. By the way, while this is running, if you wanna do that, the tag you're looking for is CSV, convert to CSV. So I'd pull this in here and I would add a, a connection off of clip values two into the convert to CSV pill. And when I run that, it would let me right click on this and download a CSV file. All right, let's pause and let this finish. All right, I'll finish running. Let's take a look here. Evaluate model, preview data. We're at 76.1 before and we're at the same thing now. Looks like we're about the same either way and removing outliers didn't help a whole lot, but that's okay. It doesn't need to. Uh, we try it anyway just to see if it can help. Not every data cleaning step is going to make all the difference. So that's it for this video.